go ahead and get started. I see everyone. My name is Catherine Foreman Gray. I'm a History and Preservation Officer with Cherokee Nation. And this is the third presentation of four that we are doing in honor of Native American Heritage Month here at the Cherokee Nation. Um, Rory Boney is going to be presenting today on the Cherokee language from talking leaves to pixels. And he's going to talk about how we're using uh, technology to uh, further um, our language. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and he's a chair. What, what is your title again? Uh, Cherokee Nation Technology Specialist, I guess. Language Technology yeah. Specialist. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Roy and, and thank you all for coming. Well, hello, everyone. I guess you can hear me okay, all right? I got this. <laughs> uh, well, like Catherine said, I'm going to talk about uh, how the syllabary it was adapted from handwriting to the printing press and beyond that. Uh, so I'm going to show a bunch of slides here showing the, uh, some image of the syllabary and how it's changed. Of course, everyone knows, you know, this is Sequoia, who has the distinction of, you know, being credited with creating the writing system. And below, you can see that's how, that's a sample of the writing system itself. Uh, that's how Sequoia signed his name on the documents they have attributed to him. <coughs> and so everyone knows the, they've heard the term talking leaves, that's, you know, you know, Sequoia famously, they say he said, called them talking leaves. He saw people writing and figured, you know, why can't we do this ourselves? So when he developed, he began developing this around 1809 or so. The dates are kind of, kind of vary, but it, it was a long, uh, intensive process. And as part of this process, you know, he his work was destroyed. Some people thought he was pursuing a bad thing. So they, some people, they say his wife burned it. Some say other people did it. But the idea is some people thought they didn't understand what he's trying to do, and they wondered what he was up to. But it proved to be a very successful thing for us as a people. <laughs> So in 1825, uh, the Cherokee Nation you know, realized they uh, saw that this was important. So they gave uh, Sequoia Guess, or George Guess, here's that says, uh, a medal. So when you see these pictures of him, he always has that medal on. <clears throat> this is the text they had on the medal there. Uh, this is an image showing uh, what the original writing system looked like. If you notice, it uh, looks like cursive writing, because at this time, uh, people were writing with dip pens and quills and that type of thing. So if you imagine writing if, with these type of pens, if you stop for a second, you have a big ink blot. That's why they're very flowing. <laughs> and next two of these syllables, you'll see kind of the modern version of how these turned out. It's kind of hard to see up on screen there, but that's uh, this image is actually at the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa. Uh, so during the development, the uh, syllabary got modified. They simplified it because they were going to uh, make it for the uh, printing press. <laughs> so here's an image showing an image of well, showing the syllabary as it was kind of you know, simplified. And they're getting ready to go to the printing press here. And so here's an image showing the uh, syllable O in Cherokee. If you, have you ever seen the type that went with the printing press, they're real tiny. Uh, so if you can imagine, the reason, one reason that it got simplified was you had to carve these pieces out on this metal type, so they simplified the writing system to fit this new technology they wanted to use. <coughs> so in 1827, uh, the, they published a newsletter showing for the missionaries the first five lines of the book of Genesis. So this is the very first instance of printed Cherokee that's on record. <laughs> a few months later, the Cherokee Phoenix was published, and this was, you know, the first uh, bilingual Native American newspaper, and it was printed in English in Cherokee. It had a very tumultuous history, and it got, you know, canceled a couple of times, and then came up a different ever, like the, the Advocate and so on. But it's still being put out today on the internet, so you have this idea that we've had this writing system for quite a while, and we're still using it. <coughs> and as part of the process. When it was going through the modifications, the, uh, there were discussions about uh, the numbers of the syllabary. Some say there were 90-something. I don't know if that's true or not. But there, there were 86, and they narrowed on 85. And the 86th one here, there's a documentation here from the Cherokee Phoenix in August 1828 <coughs> talking about this syllable that they uh, never made type for. It's the, some say it's the ma character. So uh, in the original uh, handwriting, you can see on the left there, that's uh, the the shape looks like a little G, 
That was the original Ma. And in the type here for the Cherokee Phoenix, they're talking about how they omitted it from the syllabary, and they talk about how they actually printed it, where they broke a capital G in the English and made it look like that shape. <coughs> so here is the uh, syllabary as it was finalized at this point. Uh, you can notice, you see that little gap there after Mu. There could have been a Ma there, but it was never adopted. <coughs> So after the uh, syllabary was, you know, became in use with printing, uh, the Cherokees uh, printed many things. A lot of it was hymns and Bibles and uh, tracts, and there were, you know, laws and, of the Cherokee Nation, the Constitution, all these types of things were published in Cherokee. <coughs> uh, this occurred, you know, for quite some time. I think it's really neat to see things like this, like the musical book. I like to think of like learning musical scales in Cherokee. That'd be like a really cool idea. <coughs> uh, here's a math book, an old math book showing, you know, uh, I, just, I guess this is, I'm not sure what type of, I'm not a math person. I think it's division. Looks like they're showing division here or something. But, uh, and again, in the seminaries, they published newsletters. Here's uh, the Cherokee Rosebuds. They, they published a lot of student work. <laughs> uh, and even the United States uh, used the syllabary in the correspondence with Cherokee Nation. The sample was uh, in 1863, the Abraham Lincoln sent a letter to Cher uh, Cherokee Nation. So you can see it was a widely used system of writing. Uh, <clears throat> I thought this was very really interesting when I seen this. Uh, the idea at the time, uh, William Eubanks developed this shorthand system of writing Cherokee of the goal was to uh, use it in the courts because, you know, at this time, uh, there's a lot of discrimination against Cherokees or other natives, too, in court, and your testimony might not have been recorded, <coughs> especially if it was in Cherokee language. So this idea of having shorthand is a cool idea. It never really took off, but I just like to show this because I think it's a really interesting adaptation of how people wanted to use our language. <coughs> Again, they, they printed the... Uh, the Constitution and various laws in Cherokee up throughout the, the years. Uh, so Cherokees were always interested in the idea of communication and technology. Uh, we had the very first phone line west of the Mississippi. Uh, the Cherokee Nation you know, felt this was a, a thing that we needed, so I think it's kind of neat that you know, we have this, uh, we had the distinction of doing this, making the first telephone line here. <laughs> I also think it's interesting that you can see here's a newspaper from roughly from the era showing we have there's uh, they had a newspaper called the Telequa Telephone. I I don't know if there's any correlation to it, but I think it's kind of neat to see that they felt in in the territory that this was a cool technology we wanted to use it. We felt there's important to uh, communicate. <laughs> here's an image of the Cherokee Advocate. Uh, there's an interesting little story here. I remember reading uh, actually yesterday about the editors of these papers at this time. It was a hotly contested uh, election, and uh, so they printed different editorials in their papers and going back and forth, and they had this dispute. <coughs> and the editor of The Advocate actually went and shot the other guy. I think it's kind of, it's not really funny, but you get the idea that Cherokees have always been like, arguing with each other over politics for quite some time. <laughs> So when the Cherokee Advocate uh, ceased publication, the uh, the printing press was sold, and the newspaper here, the Fort Gibson New Era newspaper, actually used the printing press to print its own newspaper. So it's it's you know we had this great invention, we had a printing press, and despite the fact that you know Cherokees kind of we didn't get to use it all that much sometimes because of politics and whatever is going on, <laughs> the technology itself was still being used. Again, here's some more samples of the syllabary being used to communicate with people. <clears throat> this is from 1917. Uh, here's an image of the Cherokee typewriter that's over at Sequoia's home. Uh, if you can imagine uh, the idea of learning how to type on this in Cherokee, because you know, there's 85 characters, so it's quite a task to memorize where all these characters are at. This is an image, actually, inside the typewriter. <coughs> we had the uh, 
uh, fortunate, uh, I guess a couple months ago, to go with the uh, translation department at Cherokee Nation to look at this typewriter. And we, uh, the uh, museum let us actually type things on it, and they let us take pictures of it. And so it's it's fascinating to see that's you know, that's a new technology at the time, typewriting, a typewriter. <laughs> and we had Cherokee on it. We adapted uh, the Cherokees. You know, a lot of people have this idea that we're kind of, you know, or the stereotype in general of natives being stuck in the past. And, you know, we always, as Cherokees, we're always on the cusp of technology. <laughs> a bit later on in the, uh, the 70s, here's the uh, IBM Selectric Typewriter element. If, you, if you've uh, been around for a while, you might recognize this. They had these in English as well in other languages, but the Cherokee Nation, uh, they initially were going to collaborate with IBM to make this, but it, co it cost too much, so they uh, found a company out in Hawaii that would make them much cheaper. Uh, the idea was, you know, to get a lot of these mass-produced so people could uh, do their own stuff. They could write their own documents. <clears throat> I don't think too many of these were actually made, and I've actually never seen one in person. I'd love to get my hands on one of these, but this is a... The Cherokee Heritage Center is supposed to have one of these, I believe, and I believe a couple of people in the community have them, but I have yet to see them. But it's again, it's showing that you know we were using technology and we adapted to like whatever came up. We we used it. <laughs> uh, this here is a newsletter called the Cherokee Speaker. It was published in the '60s, and I found it interesting that you can see here it's talking about the, this group. Uh, they're out in Chicago. They procured a thousand dollars to uh, make a set of Cherokee type. So when they had this produced, they sold it for about 50 bucks for a set of Cherokee types. And there were people that got this, and they made their own uh, little newspapers and publications at that time from the 60s on. <laughs> uh, here's a sample of that type that came from this uh, newsletter. Uh, this is about a squirrel. But they were, they were printing this to show that, yeah, we got print again. If you want to use it, here's your opportunity. Uh, here's an image from a 1965 Cherokee primer uh, using that type. Uh, it's uh, as a person that studied typography in college, I find this really fascinating to see how the letter forms are related to each other as each uh, version of the technology uh, advanced and modified. You can see we still have the same basic uh, shapes of the syllables, but yet they're being changed ever so slightly as it moves on in time. <coughs> And again, here's an image from the 1975 Cherokee Dictionary by that Durbin uh, worked on. I spoke with uh, Adeline Smith a while back about these projects, and she remembers the process of typing these things on a typewriter. And she talked about how difficult it was having to you know, type the part in English out and to leave spaces for the Cherokee and go back in and add the Cherokee into it. If you can imagine... Having to do that now, you know, now you can type it on the, your computer or your uh, iPad or whatever it is, but back then that was quite a task. At the, she, she really made sure that I knew how difficult it was. <laughs> and again, this is just another publication showing the use of that particular type. Uh, you can see it's related to the other one. I'm not sure if it's the same one or not, but you get the idea that Cherokees were producing content in the syllabary. Uh, as every decade it went, we still tried as best we could to uh, print things and get content out to the people. <clears throat> In the 1970s, the late 1970s, uh, that's when uh, computer technology became uh, more common. It got to the point where you could have a computer in your home if you could afford it. Uh, so I like to show this image because it shows it... Uh, uh, there's a typographer named Hermann Zopf. He's a German uh, guy, and what he did, is, uh, he designs lots of fonts. So if you use a computer now, there's a big chance that you're using fonts that he designed. So he was working on a Cherokee font back in the late 70s. It never was actually finished, but you get the idea that there was an interest in this in technology. I think it's kind of funny, too, to see up in the corner, it says, Chatagi instead of Chalagi up there because you have in the silver and the cross in the center that's the tall, not the law. But <laughs> that's kind of what happens sometimes when there are people, you know, working with these with the language that do, do a lot of uh, research. You know, they kind of mis they misspell some of the the words because some of them look the syllables may resemble others. So it's 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 a very interesting territory to be in. <clears throat> so in the 80s. 
Uh, Again, with Durbin worked with a group out of Louisiana to make the very first turkey word processing software. Uh, here's a newspaper article that was about that. Uh, Durbin was, uh, provided me a copy of the letter that was, uh, they presented to Chief Lumenko were showing the technology in use. So this uh, image here, it's kind of hard to see, I guess, from where you're sitting, but <coughs> this was... Uh, yeah, it was Cherokee word processed words. It was a computer program that did this. And this was, again, in 1987. So you can see we still were uh, advancing and using technology as it went. <coughs> uh, this uh, font here was actually uh, developed by uh, uh, Franklin McLean and Al Webster. Uh, this was used in the uh, several publications, including the Cherokee Observer, uh, I think it's really great to see that there are independent people out there making Cherokee fonts as well. Because uh, in the early 90s, that's when the idea of uh, desktop publishing kind of became a big thing. It let you, people could go home and you could print your own stuff, you could make your own documents. It was much cheaper than it used to be. So this technology gave people a voice that they may not have had before. <coughs> uh, Again, a bit later, in 1993, uh, a gentleman named Joe Cicero uh, developed a Cherokee font. Uh, this was based on the uh, beginning Cherokee book by Ruth Bradley Holmes. There's a chart in the book that they did a scan of, and so they got the font from the scan, and they uh, gave this file to the uh, UKB in which they released their own Cherokee font. <coughs> Uh, a bit later, the Cherokee Nation uh, received the same work, and they modified the uh, uh, font slightly. If you compare the two, they look pretty close, but there are slight differences in some of the syllables. But this was released uh, by Information Services in, at Cherokee Nation around the year 2000. Uh, this font, for the longest time, became one of the most widely used Cherokee fonts ever. It's still being used now, actually. Uh, and it was really great that it was made, and people created lots of things with it. <laughs> but the technology under the font itself, uh, it was still, the computer still read this as, this is an English font. It may look tricky to your eyes, but the computer is reading it as this is uh, English. So what uh, happened is that we need to, needed again to evolve the technology of the writing system. So that brings me to uh, Unicode. Uh, Unicode is the uh, universal standard in which languages are encoded in computer operating systems. So any device that you have that's uh, digital, if it's a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, a cell phone, whatever it is, operates on the standard of Unicode. Uh, in the mid-90s, uh, Durbin, Feeling, and Dr. Gloria Sly worked with a gentleman named Michael Everson out of Ireland to make the application to get the syllabary encoded into the Unicode code system. Uh, it took about five years for the process to go through and get all the proper, uh, proper approvals, but it, it, they did it in 2000. <laughs> uh, so what that meant was that uh, the Cherokee language itself was digitized. It was encoded in all the uh, computer operating systems that there are. Uh, this was a major... Uh, step forward for our language again. Uh, it took a bit for it to trickle out, you know, because it was new technology, and uh, when you think about the population that we have, there's not a lot of people that can afford a lot of this new technology and computers and things, so it took a bit to trickle down. <coughs> so in the year 2003, Apple Computer introduced Cherokee language support for all their computers, which meant that every uh, Apple device that you buy, or a computer device, has the Cherokee language on it in the box. So there's no need to download anything extra. You can go to your system settings and enable a Cherokee keyboard, meaning you can type on your keyboard on your computer, and you can type in Cherokee and it displays your font properly. <clears throat> so this development uh, led to the introduction of uh, these uh, Apple computers in the immersion school around the year 2008 or so. Uh, this allowed the immersion students to begin doing their homework in the Cherokee language. Uh, they did blogs and wikis and emails. They had user accounts with usernames in the syllabary and passwords in the syllabary. So it was a really cool uh, computing, computing environment to see that you know, we have a school system and the kids are using this technology in the Cherokee language. <clears throat> uh, 
So after the uh, introduction of these computers in the school, uh, we, we needed to identify areas in which the uh, language should appear for other users. Uh, if we wanted the Cherokee language to kind of you know, grow, it's important you have to speak it and to learn how to speak it, but we still have the writing system. We can use the, the uh, new digital technology that's coming. So Facebook uh, opened up the, uh, their database for it to be translated into Cherokee. <clears throat> and they do this by a process called uh, crowd surfing or uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, crowdsourcing is where all the users of the community in this uh, project can go in and they can add their translations of these. And what happens is the uh, community votes on it. So you can vote it up and down, and the translations that get the most votes actually go live on the website. So if you see a uh, translation you don't like or agree with, you can go in and vote it or add your own to it. And again, like I said the community does this. <clears throat> so anyone with a Facebook account can actually go into Facebook and uh, go to your settings and go to the uh, uh, translation app, they call it, and switch your language to Cherokee, and it will turn your interface into the Cherokee language. Uh, it's a big project. Uh, it's constantly evolving, you know, like most new technologies do. Uh, so there's still things that aren't translated, but it's, it's, I said it's really exciting to, to watch this happen. <clears throat> so soon after that, uh, we continued the partnership with Apple, and uh, they released the update to the iPhone software. Uh, this was in 2010, and what that meant was when they released this update, they were immediately made over 200 million devices in the world Cherokee compatible. Uh, you know, there's the uh, you know, Apple's line about there's an app for that. Uh, that's not quite true in this case because this is bigger than an application. It's actually not, you know, it's, you, don't, you don't download it, it's actually on the device. So if you go to uh, like the Verizon store or the AT&T store and buy an iPhone or an iPad or iPod, the Cherokee language, again, it's, it's on the device itself. You just go through your system settings and turn it on. And so you have it in your pocket. If you have an iPhone right now, you have this in your pocket already. <clears throat> uh, here's some screenshots from the device showing you know, the Cherokee language in the settings. Uh, and there's an th another image showing the Cherokee keyboard. Uh, it's engineered for you can uh, access all 85 characters from this one screen. Uh, if you're familiar with the syllabary, you, it's kind of hard to read up here, but all these keys are the first uh, syllable in that chart, you know, in the left side of the row. So, like, if you hold down the ga key, you have the ga, ge, gi, go, gu, and ga. Like, all those syllables are hidden under each of the keys. <coughs> So following this, the next year after that, Apple will release another update to their software. And this added the, it's called the locale data to their systems. Uh, locale data is uh, basically it's your uh, date and time system. Uh, so like the calendars, days of the week, this whole thing on your devices, if you enable this, your, uh, your calendar can be in the Cherokee language. Uh, your, your clock, your AM and PM and all that will be in Cherokee. So again, I said it's really neat to see that our language is you know, living in these new digital domains. <clears throat> so continuing the momentum of these developments, Google uh, contacted Cherokee Nation to further you know, this idea of our communication. Uh, so in 2011, uh, we worked with Google and the Cherokee Translation Department to translate several thousand terms of technology for the Google search engine. Uh, so now you can actually go to the Google settings and uh, enable the Cherokee language in Google and your interface will turn into Cherokee. Uh, the other thing they did for us that I think is really, uh, really great is they made this virtual keyboard for us, which means that if you have a device that doesn't have uh, a Cherokee keyboard support on it, meaning you can't type in Cherokee on it, you can actually go to Google's website and enable this and uh, type in Cherokee on those devices or a computer that may not have a Cherokee uh, keyboard layout installed on it. And additionally, this, uh, this virtual keyboard, the source code for it, uh, Google put that in the public domain, which means that you can copy this code if you're you know, in the making websites and put this into your own website. Uh, you can make your own, basically you can make your own uh, Cherokee word processor now. <clears throat> so the partnership with Google, you know, continued still. And uh, in 2012, the uh, their Gmail product was re uh, released in Cherokee, 
which was another major step forward. With, you know, we have this major email system in our language. Uh, again, the translation department, you know, did, did this. It's really great you know, that, you know, they can do all this really great work because it's very technical. And working with them to explain you know, what these mean, these terms and things, you know, it's, it's quite a challenge, but they, they rose up and they did it. <clears throat> and if you're uh, a university student, uh, a lot of universities have a Gmail as its underlying email system. And I know NSU does. So you can, if you're an NSU student, you can enable the system settings at, and your email at school and have access to the Cherokee Gmail as well. <clears throat> So the uh, the big thing after that was you know the one of the last remaining huge software uh, companies is Microsoft. Uh, so they saw that the Cherokee Nation that we had as Cherokees the the, uh, the determination to do this with our language to you know exist in a digital domain. Uh, so we got to collaborate with them and uh, uh, we have Windows 8 in Cherokee now. Uh, which means that if you go to uh, if you have Windows 8 and go to your language settings, uh, you can actually download a language interface pack in Cherokee, and it will install it. <clears throat> and it turns all your menus into Cherokee and your like folder structure and all this. Uh, it doesn't mean like if you run other stuff. If you have like a, if you run Photoshop or something, it's not going to make Photoshop in Cherokee. But anything that's Microsoft on it will be in Cherokee. <clears throat> So all the, uh, again, like the system settings, here's a screenshot showing uh, Windows 8 in Cherokee. And there's, again, there's certain terms that you're not translate. You don't translate because of copyright, like the word Microsoft and Windows and that type of thing. But the general idea is that it, there is, you know, a Cherokee version of this. And, uh, you know, again, the translation department, you know, it was amazing to work with them on this. We had a team of, uh, I believe, 11 translators on it. Uh, about half of them are staff, and the rest were uh, contractors. And we used community people, and if we had questions, we would contact others and ask them. So it really was a, a great community effort among the Cherokee language speakers to do this. <coughs> uh, the other development of this uh, collaboration with Microsoft was the development of this font. Uh, when you, it's called Gadugi, as you, you all may know, you've heard this term a lot probably in the last few years, but it, it's based on the idea of working together. And what this font means, we had to develop a, it's called a use, user interface font. So on a computer, you can't use your standard old fonts. You have to have the uh, streamlined shapes of the letters here, or the syllables. So these are like the, the shapes of the most streamlined version you can get of how the syllables are shaped and still retain their meaning of what that sound is. So this was the, uh, the UI font. Uh, but what they did additionally is uh, if Microsoft works with other uh, tribal languages in the future, they will add their uh, writing glyphs to this font, meaning that this font's going to be reserved for all the uh, indigenous people of the world that want to use Microsoft products. They can put their language uh, letters into this. <coughs> uh, additionally, uh, this web link down at the bottom uh, if you go there online, you can access the uh, Cherokee tech terms that were done for Microsoft. It's a searchable database, so if you're looking like for the word network or software, or whatever it is you're maybe wanting to know that's technology-based, you can go to this website and search it. Uh, on top of this, uh, this, this database is for Microsoft. Uh, it ties into their translation software, which we're still a bit away from this, but if we can feed enough information to their database, they can actually create a, uh, well, somewhat a, uh, a machine translator for us. It won't be perfect, but it'll be something you can then kind of type in your word, and it might try to translate it for you. <clears throat> I say we're still far from that, and that'll never be perfect for any language, but it's still great to think that we as Cherokees, we have this type of technology at our fingertips. Uh, so as part of this process, uh, you know, I mentioned the idea that we have you know, Google, uh, Facebook, and all. You know, it's in Cherokee. The technical term for this process is called localization. Uh, <clears throat> it's a stand standard industry-wide term in the technology world, and they call it localization instead of translation uh, because the idea is that they're going to make it for local users. So you're not just translating a word straight across. You're actually they want you to, as users, they want you to uh, insert. 
some meaning to the words they're using in the software. So rather than just saying, you know, uh, this is a line break, or if, it, if there's something that your user base would describe that differently, you have the opportunity to uh, describe it the way you want to describe it. <laughs> so here's a few sample words. Uh, again, this is a very small sample. There were about a total of around 400,000 terms that have been translated recently in the last few years for these projects. Uh, my favorite here is uh, junk mail. Because, <laughs> you know, like, you know, if you stub your toe, you kind of go, oh, yo. So you're talking about the word uyo'i is kind of meaning it's kind of bad. Or if, and sometimes you're talking about pain here. But I thought that was a funny translation for the term spam, because I know you don't like spam. So it's kind of it's this idea that you're localizing it. You're not just calling it junk mail. <coughs> So uh, again, you know, going back around to uh, the history, uh, the Cherokee Phoenix, you know, came out in 1828. It was published in Cherokee and in English, and so we're still doing this process as people. The Cherokee Phoenix still is being published, and there are still some articles in the Phoenix that are in Cherokee. Uh, this was taken just a few days ago, talking about the. Uh, Cherokee Nation Youth Choir uh, being, you know, they're going to sing at the, uh, or be in the Macy's Day Parade. So, you know, it's, it's really neat to see that, you know, not only are we using, you know, technology and getting the word out, we still have our own language, we're doing it, and we're still participating in the world. Uh, a lot of people, again, you know, I go to a lot of different places and work with different people, and the question always comes up about why should we do this for Cherokee? They they always say and there's not enough people that speak it. There's not there's not millions of people. There's thousands of people that speak, but there's not millions. Uh, <clears throat> and the answer I always give them is like, why not? Because we have a long history of this, and there are people that use it. And you know, even though if we have we're in a situation where we're bringing it back, we don't have as many speakers as we, as we used to. But these types of tools help greatly in uh, perpetuating our language. Uh, we don't want to lose it. That this is a great tool. It's not the savior of Cherokee language by any means, but it's, it, it's like I said, it's a great way to help preserve it, help people to learn it. And not only that, like a lot of times, the, like the original Phoenix back in the 1820s, a lot of its purpose was sort of like a PR campaign, you know, to help fight removal and to get the idea that you know Cherokees were we're here, we don't need to be treated this way. It kind of serves the same purpose now that we are still here as people. Uh, it's, you know, we, we are as important as anyone else, and so we need this technology too. So having the people, a team of people that want to do this and work towards this goal is uh, really uh, great. So it's, you know, I think most of the translators are in here that worked on it. I see most of them. I don't think everybody's here, but most of them are here. So, like, I'd like to really thank you guys for helping on this stuff, because none of this would happen without you. Uh, I just kind of aid in the technical a aspects of it, but it's the translators that do this work. <coughs> so I'm going to kind of wrap up here. I'll leave some questions for you if you have anything to talk about or any... So I'm always interested in finding out more information about the history of the writing system, and I know sometimes people point me in another direction, like, well, this person did this, or this person did that, and so have you got any questions or comments or anything? I have a question about the uh, original transition between Quiet's original syllabary mm -hmm. and the, the font that was created from that. I noticed you had the O character. Mm -hmm. And it looked as if what was created was simply a chop. Yeah. And, yeah. and what was left. So has anybody studied that transition to see how many of those characters were actually done that way? And not, what part of the original uh, character survived? Not really. Uh, there's been uh, a book and a couple of articles by a lady named Ellen Cushman that's kind of looked at it. But she hasn't really done a really deep analysis of that transition of what happened and how the shapes became what they were. Just it's sort of very general Can you go back to that image? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the the little arc on the side. I said the chop. You can no, see that, where uh, that part 
yeah, yeah. survived, and even even the the round circle at the bottom yeah. was enlarged, but it still uh, survives. And it, yeah. That's kind of an interesting uh, idea that Sequoia's original syllabary is still alive in in that yeah, in, yeah. in more ways than just that it yeah, represents yeah. the language. Yeah, the actual shape is still in a lot of it. Yeah, it's it's in part of her analysis she. Some of the syllables actually have a very common core shape, so she laid a lot of them on top of each other to kind of show that common shape. But there's some that are just radically different altogether, but there's not been a really intense study of how that's been, the connections there. If you've had your, uh, if you've enabled the Cherokee language on your PC uh, or your Mac, and you, uh, you have uh, a visual disability. Uh, is, is it APA compliance? Will it read aloud to in Cherokee? <clears throat> Not yet. Uh, there's a project at Apple that we've been feeding information to for a while to do their text to speech uh, uh, software to work in Cherokee. Uh, but because of the tonality of the language, and uh, there's not a lot of uh, speakers to feed the, uh, the audio. Uh, data to it, it's going to be a long time before we get to that point. As other languages have done it, like Japanese, you know, they have that same kind of tonal, tonality thing going on, And but it's possible, but we need millions of hours of audio to make that happen, uh, because it's it's possible because the, you know, the Unicode encoding, so the computers can know what we're trying to do, but we still need to record, if we were to want to really do that to a really high degree, we do need a lot of uh, uh, recordings of Cherokee speakers that have that capture all the different tones and sounds and that type of thing. Because if you just got like the like the five or six you new know, guys sitting there and yeah, that's not enough data to get that to really work. I have one more question of the <laughs> translators. The character Moo. Have we found any words besides Moody <laughs> that have that in it? There, I think there's a name, uh, ones from around uh, Muldrow someplace. His uh, name is Moog, Moogie. So, uh, Moody and Moogie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I had found a, a, another name on the Dawes Roll. There's a woman named Muya Backwater. But when you look at the original uh, uh, testimony, it was supposed to be new yet instead of new. So there was a typo. I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one other thing I got to point out too is I get the question a lot about uh, a lot of people use the Android uh, system for your phones and tablets. Uh, currently, there's no Cherokee support for them yet. Uh, I believe if you get the newest version of Android, if you get a new phone or a new tablet, uh, you can actually install a font on there by yourself. It's open now for you to do that, but the older devices can't. But there hopefully, I can't say it's officially, but there could be something coming out soon for that. Because <laughs> uh, I get that question quite often. Got any other questions or comments? or? Which one? The keyboard, church nation keyboard font. The. Let's see, where is it at? This one? Yeah. Go to that no. That no. Lowercase. Mm -hmm. First row, second one, the last one, and next to last one. That no. Mm -hmm. We asked the. Uh, did that bar on top be put back in, but there was. It wouldn't yeah. be put back in there. Yeah, there there are many different fonts that have that now, and this is just one type. But on a lot of them use this, that's why I say that that that, one, that bar needs to be back on there, I believe. On the top Yeah, right. The right next to you. Yeah. Well, the this this font here is the one that's being phased out because it's like I mentioned earlier, it's underneath. It's a technically an English font. So in the new stuff that we've been doing, 
there is a font that looks like this that's compatible now, but this old one uh, has lots of problems uh, beyond just even the shapes of it, just the uh, usage of it. Like if you try to use it in an email, if the person doesn't have it, you know, the same one that you have, it's going to get all garbled. That happens quite a lot still because there are people here that use that in their signatures and things. Uh, but I say we're in the process of trying to phase it out. It's going to take a while because it was such a important development when it came out you know, around the year 2000. People really latched onto it. And there are a lot of documents that were made in it, like yeah. especially a lot of the Phoenix documents and a lot of the translation documents since you know, were used in this font. But within the last uh, maybe six years or so, we've tried to steer away from this just because uh, it causes these complications. And it's part of the, the, the growing pains, I guess, of you know, new technology. Uh, like all these other things, you know, like you couldn't use that typewriter ball or another typewriter, you know. So it's kind of the same thing. We're still adapting and evolving. But, yeah, there is a uh, font of this that is compatible with Unicode now. And I can give you a copy of it, actually. I, I can put it on your computer. <laughs> Yeah, I was missing the... Oh, yeah, the interesting thing about this particular font, too, is, uh, like, if you look at the day syllable, which uh, I don't quite know where it is on this chart, just keyboard here, uh, it's right under the no you're talking about. Uh, if you look at the, uh, you know, on the back side of the S shape, it's got a little weird square shape in it. That's actually from, uh, that's a printing error from when they scan the, the document they use to get this shape off of. It's got an ink blot on there. And that's what that is, because if you look at all the old documents, that they never had that little square on the back side, just had the two bars sticking out. Yeah. So when you look at all the, letter, the shapes of these, you can see how they've evolved, and some of them carry that type of uh, mistake in it. If you go downtown by the courthouse and those bricks, you see some of those bricks have that day, and it's got that error in it. And uh, uh, at immersion, uh, some of the students try to draw that. They'll like do that and make that box and all that. And <laughs> So I said there's a lot of, uh, I guess, outreach and education that needs to happen about some of this stuff to get people to understand why we're moving on to a new type of uh, technology. I mean, a font's kind of, the end user sees it and sees Cherokee, but underneath the computer is doing something entirely different. And the average user doesn't really need to know that so much, but understanding the difference in the Cherokee fonts, because there's not that many of them, will help a lot for the user base. Was there a reasoning behind the layout? Uh, either typing or...? Uh, from what I understand, it was uh, supposedly based on frequency. I'm not sure. I've never seen the data of where this came from, of what their intention is, but like you can see the... Uh, S, this, and the D, you know, right, right? You know, they're pretty common, so they're on the home row. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was Tony Williams and uh, Lisa LaRue and uh, Anna Sixkiller worked on this, but I don't know where, where the data is for the frequency count of the keyboard layout. Got any uh, more questions? <laughs> well, if not, I will close it here. Yeah. I get. Yeah. Um, the, this new version is the NAH include on it the one that can make all those the new version of this. Yeah, the uh, the, the one with like a G. Is it talking about NAH? Yeah, that, like that G, that NAH. That yeah, song. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the new versions too. Yeah. Uh, it was left off of this one, wasn't it? This, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, if you go to uh, the website that I have at the end here, uh, the language technology website right here, uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a link on there that will take you to a lot of different Cherokee fonts you can download and install. And there's another link that uh, has, they're called the keyboard layouts, that way you type in Cherokee, so you can follow that other uppercase and lowercase version. Or you can actually type in phonetics. So if you want to type, you know, Jalagi, you type T S A L A G I, and it will change it to syllabary for you. 
But this link here will take you to the website where you can download all this stuff. And it has instructions, too, on how to install it. Uh, and if you have any questions, there's you know, that email address there. I will go to the members of the department. It'll go to me, too. So if you have any questions or want, you know, that's how you can contact us about this stuff. I do have a question about the, uh, the our new website, the Cherokee Nation website. Before, you were able to start typing in, and it would pull up words, either in syllabary or in English. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do that anymore. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Where it would, you could type in, like, DA, and it would give you a variety of words. Yeah. Uh, or you could type in Augie, and it would give you several words in Cherokee that began with Augie, but it doesn't do that anymore. It yeah, it's forces you to just type in a word and hit search. Mm -hmm. and yes, there's no choice now of right. anything. Is there any, do you, do you know uh, what you're talking about? Yeah, is, there, I know what, what, I, is there any efforts to try to, I don't know if it's because it's completely different. I, don't know yeah. about that. I, I would assume that's uh, when I guess they did their website re redesign. That's a IS issue. Uh, I'm not sure what like, type of uh, back end they're using to do the searching, that type of thing. But it's not terribly difficult. I don't think they have that back up. But uh, sometimes, too, it might be just kind of slow. Uh, I've noticed this on other websites and search engines when you type, it used to do that. And sometimes it, it would take a bit to populate for some reason. But uh, as far as the Church Nation website, uh, I said I don't, I don't work on that you know, directly or anything, but that would be a IS, their information services uh, question. Okay. That might be something that they just don't know about that's missing from it still because they're still adding things to it. Yeah, when they did the change, I know the, the ad, even the addresses of some things changed, and so that word list was went to a different spot. And a lot of people were saying, where'd it go? Did they take it down? They didn't take it down. They just moved it, and that took a while to, you know, get out to the people and where they could find it again. But hopefully, I was speaking to one of the guys from IS earlier. Uh, he mentioned updating the uh, that word list on the Cherokee Nation website. So hopefully, you know, we can do that and maybe fix the uh, issue you're talking about. I just had a lot of people asking about it, and so I went in to try because I knew what they were talking about. So I went in to try it and didn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if we can get that fixed. Well, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>